let me ask you a question. Are you looking for a new way, okay, a new approach to cold seller leads, people you haven't talked to before because agents are doing it wrong and we've been programmed to do it wrong and that's okay. Like when we get in the business, we don't know. We have no idea what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to do it. We literally just hire a coach or listen to a broker or watch an agent and we just do what we feel like we're supposed to do. And I'm telling you right now, with the with the way the market changes every single year, every single year the market is different, right? 2000, every year, if you look at 18, 19, 20, 20, every single year had its own challenges. It had its different price points and inventory levels and interest rates and everything changes every year. You literally have to change up and tweak your business plan every single year. And this year's no different. Next year's going to be no different. The year after, it's always going to continue to change. I was saying this before we went live, that change is actually what keeps life exciting. <laughs> Without change, then what, what are we like preparing for change and figuring out how, putting the pieces of the puzzle together to figure out how to take advantage of changes that are upcoming um, that we see that we can we can visualize some changes coming but there's other changes coming that we don't know it's even coming right these are unexpected changes and when they happen it's time to adapt and it's a good thing that we can't see some of these changes because if we could see them coming we'd be worried about them to the point where it would actually be a negative impact on our life on our business on our mental health etc so i mean the, the, the really the bottom line i always said this Right, 95% of the stuff that you worry about never happens. And the 5% that does, you can deal with it when it happens. Um, and it's 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 almost like this NAR settlement thing coming up. I mean, they just it seems like they just pushed it out again. You know, today's the deadline for brokerages to opt in to uh, be a part of the settlement if they do two billion uh, or more in annual sales. Um and in the article, it, it clearly says that, you know, at that point, NAR has till August 17th to say what the new rules are. And then the brokerages and MLSs have till September 16th to follow the rules. Like everybody thinks 2000, uh, like August 17th is going to be the day everything comes into effect. Not necessarily. Maybe some in some places and some MLSs and some brokerages, right? Um, nevertheless, the point is, is this, Right. Is it going to be different? Yes. Do we need to adapt? Yes. But don't we every year? <laughs> I mean, let's get into it, guys. Today, I want to share with you my new script. All right. And I've been working on this for months and months and months. And the reason why I adapted my script, I'll, I'll let you know exactly why I adapted it this way and why it works so well in the current market that we're in, where we have, uh, you know, Owners that are sitting on the sideline because their, their rate in their current home is so low. Why would they move? Okay. This is what we're going to address. We're going to approach it differently than what we've been taught. I want to unprogram your brain around how we approach sellers so that we can actually start the relationship out on the right foot and really plant the seed for that lifelong business relationship. All right. Let's get into this. Today, I want to share with you... Um, like exactly what the script is, okay? What is the script? I want to go through it. I'm going to go through it with you. I also want to tell you why this is going to work for you, and I'm going to give you a link to download a copy of the script, okay? So we're going to we're going to get into all of that, but first I want to tell you. I want to I want to share with you right here on this vibe board exactly where the largest opportunity is in the market right now so that you can take advantage. I want you to you have to understand this before you go out and start talking to cold sellers and trying to do build your business because you, you have to understand what we're actually working towards here. Okay. You have to understand what we're actually working towards and to visualize it out it will help you understand what we're working towards because I want to help you make a million bucks a year and every, each and every one of you can do that. Okay. So let me share my vibe. Okay. So down here we've got transactions. Okay, right here, I've got U.S. population. And then right here, I've got inventory. Okay, and so what I want to do is I want to take this all the way back to when I started in the business in 2002. Okay, 2002. Okay, so the number of transactions in 2002 
was right around, you know, give or take throughout the years, around five million. Okay. Around five million. Okay. Inventory, inventory was around. It was like it, it fluctuated between like 1.5 million and 2.5 million. And, th and this was true right here through the whole 80s, like 80s and 90s inventory. The number of homes for sale fluctuated between 1.5 million and 2.5 million. Okay. Now, back in 2002, 2000, around that area, we were around a little less, actually, than 300 million population. Three hundred million U.S. population. Okay, this is what it looked like in two thousand two. Okay, now, now if you if you go to the peak, right? Let's say the market blew up, right, in two thousand five. Right? People think people think two thousand eight, two thousand five. Okay, we had we had gotten up to. Let me redo this. We had gotten up to. 7 million transactions, existing home sales, 7 million. That's the record, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, that's the record. Okay. Um, and we were actually, we were at, this was actually, it's actually 280, 280 million. And by the time this happened, we were like 305 million population, okay? And our inventory, okay? And so inventory kind of started to peak, uh, started to kind of come up, you know, whatever. And by 2008, we hit 4 million active homes for sale. 4 million active homes for sale, okay? And in 2008, okay, that's three years after we hit the 7 million, right? The next year was 6 million, the next year of 5 million, and then 2008 was 4 million. So, to, so picture this. In 2008, we had 4 million homes for sale and 4 million transactions, okay? 4 million homes for sale and 4 million transactions, okay? Then... Right. So this is the trend of transactions. It got to seven mil and went down to four mil. OK, then it slowly started coming up. Right. And you get into 2010. Right. You get into 2015, you get into 2019. Right. And it kind of gets back around that five million, you know, give or take like it hit five point three. One year. Uh, but it was right there, five to five and a half million, all the way to two, all the way to two thousand, really. Two thousand twenty, right? Um, and inventory, inventory from the four million, it just continued to kind of dwindle down, dwindle down, dwindle down, dwindle down, right? And right around pre-pandemic. We were at about 1.8 million to 2.4 million active homes for sale. So we're sitting on a 5 million, basically a 5 million uh, transaction year pre-pandemic and like a 2 million active listing. Uh, and at this point, the, the population got up to 330 million. Okay. So th this is what it, this is what it's looking like because I'm going to show you where the opportunity is right here, okay? Because right here in 2008, this was the best opportunity. Why? I can tell you because I was in the business. I I got back in the business in 2008, right? And I did exactly what I'm going to tell you today, and I'm going to give you a better syst a better form of communication that I, than I, than what I used back then. It was, it was, it was actually very similar. I'm wording it better now. I'm going to tell you why it was similar, but I got back in here. And then by 2014, right, right around here, when, when transactions got back to the 5 million mark, I was doing a hundred deals a year. Okay. This is because of two things. One, I understood how to take advantage of the market when it was down and B, I understood why, 
because when the market rebounded, I was going to be in position to take advantage where the market four, five, and six X my volume. So this is what I want you to understand that if you do what I'm saying, that if you do what I'm saying, then you can take what you've been selling all year long, a lot of you, and you can turn it into your monthly transaction count. If you take what I'm saying, you can turn your yearly transaction count, like if you're doing, you know, five, 10 deals a year, you can turn that into five, 10 deals a month if you do what I'm saying. Because that's what I did. But, you, but it's, it's a way bigger opportunity. I'm going to show you why. And so as we, as we get into the pandemic, right, and then 2021, we shot up. To, to 6 million, go back. We shot up to 6 million transactions. 6 million, it's not as high as the 7 mil. See, 7 mil is still the, still the record, okay? But we hit 6 million transactions in 2021, okay? At that time, we were at about 1.5 million homes for sale. Okay, and let me move that cursor. There we go. Okay, I mean, this is where it gets interesting is like, we haven't even got back to the record year, which is 7 million. Okay, we're going to hit 7 million again. Okay, now in 2024, get this, in 2022, 2024, we're back down to the 4 million transaction a year range. We did 4 million transactions last year, the same as 2008. The same as 2008, okay? However, right now, as, we, as it stands, we have 1 million uh, active homes for sale, which is, which is higher than it was, right? It's rising back, but it's, not, it's, it's still 50% it's still away from pre-pandemic, and it's still about 100% away from where we were um, no, that, that's not pre-pandemic. That was after pandemic. We're still, we're still half 50% lower than we were pre-pandemic. We still need twice as many listings to get where we were pre-pandemic, which historically was still low because back in the eighties and nineties, we were at 1.5 to 2.5 million, right? I mean, I mean, and, and we're in a world where now we're at 340 million population, Okay, so right now we've got the largest population ever. We've got half the listings that we've had historically going back 50 years, half the listings. And we just hit, because of interest rates, the same number of transactions as we did in 2008. Now, now you put in the comments right now, based on what I just showed you, okay, where do you, where do you think the market is fixing to go? All right, 5 million seems to be like, the median, right? Five million, that's kind of what it what it was. Then we had the run up and then the crash. And then it got back to five million for you know a good 10 years, right? A good a good decade. And then we had the crazy run up and the COVID and uh the stimulus money and all that stuff, right? And now we're back. Now we had a run up and now we're back down. Where do you think it's gonna go? I'll tell you where it's gonna go. It's gonna go back to the five million range. And the 5 million range, ladies and gentlemen, is a great range. And we've got far more population and we're going to hit another 7 million year. I don't know when that year is going to be, but it's going to happen. We're going to have another run up to 7 million. Maybe, maybe within the next decade, we're going to have that year. You're going to wish to God you were in real estate when we have it. We're going to get back to 5 million. The run up between 4 million and 5 million can literally turn your year's income into your monthly income if you do it right. So, so, so that's what happened to me. I was doing five, 10 deals a year. Well, then I turned into doing five to 10 deals a month. And it was because I took advantage of the market. It's the same thing I'm trying to tell you to do right now. This is what's going to happen. It's not a matter of if. The only, the only if is do you realize it and are you going to take advantage of it? That's the only if. 
There's no other if. <laughs> this is going to happen. It's just a matter of if you're going to take advantage. And if you're watching this from another country, all this stuff is still relevant to you. We have cycles in the market. And if you take advantage of the down cycle, you can literally four, five, six, 10x your business every single time. And guess what? It never goes to zero, ever. There's always opportunities. So, so if, if, we, if we go out here and we do what I'm asking you to do, and, and, we, and we build our database the way I'm going to ask you to build it, right? And we, and we expand the influence in our market. More people know who we are. They, like, they know us. They like us. They trust us to do business. Then, see, if, if you, here's the thing, right? And it's never been so easy, ever. It's, this is the easiest time in history to go out there and succeed. It's the easiest and the hardest, right? Okay. What do you have to do? Find... Find out what top producers do and go do that. Now, what do top producers do? What do top producers do? If you think about every top producer, what do they have? Okay, They have a massive database that they have a system in place to stay relevant with that database. And when people want to buy and sell, they call that top producer. This is not rocket science. The only difference in you and top producers are that they've been in the business long enough to have enough conversations to build the relationships needed. And they have systems in place to make sure that the thousands of people that know who they are never forget them. That's it. That's completely it. Okay. So that's what it is. So so let me let me dive into this script. Here it is. And this will work for you. Okay? This this script is called I'm calling this the trade up seller script. The trade up seller script because that's what we're doing, right? And this is to be used as a guideline, okay? When you use a script you're using it as a guideline of the conversation. You're not trying to read it word for word, guys. You're trying to use it to guide you through the conversation um, naturally. Okay, um, you can, you can, you got the script here. If you need a list of owners to call, save one hundred and fifty dollars on Red X. Go to RedX.com backslash Ricky. Get Geo Leads Plus. You get seventy five hundred property owners of your choice. You can filter them down to the exact properties you want to talk to. If you don't want to talk to two bedrooms because you got a three bedroom for sale, you can do that. And literally, this if you build your business this way, the, if anybody tells you, beware of people who tell you there's only one way to build a business. Beware. I'm here to tell you that every single thing in the universe works a million, a million percent. But what I will tell you is that I understood the principle behind the business of real estate is a one-to-one -one business, meaning you don't sell one-to-many. You don't get people into a group and sell them a house. They can't all buy that house. You, 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 you may be able to do that like, you know, like auctioneers do that when they have like, uh, you know, several properties for sale and they auction to a group. Like, it, like there, are, there, are, there are instances and worlds where it does exist, However, um, generally for real estate agents that aren't in the auction business, it's a one-to-one -one business, meaning what? We have to talk one-on-one -on -one with that prospect, with our client, with our customer before any business is going to happen. So am I big on social? Yep. Um, do I feel like it's imperative for agents? I think they should do it. Um, it's kind of like a, it, for me, it's kind of like the salt and pepper of your business. Like the main course of relevance is weekly email, text messaging. I think social media is a way to get the data to get them into your database that you can stay relevant with them forever because you can't control the algorithms. At the end of the day to do deals, the only thing between you and a deal is a conversation with the person and then you connecting with that person better than any other agent.
And so when I realized this, I'm like, okay, all these other agents are out there getting leads on social and Zillow and all this. They're waiting on leads to come to them. They probably, I, I estimated, they probably get like 500 leads a year or something like that. I can talk to 500 people a week. Like I can dial 500 people a week. And so I felt like I was doing in a year what most people were in a week, what most people were doing in a year. And therefore I was knocking down a whole year of their work every single week. That's why my business grew faster than everybody, because I understood the concept and the principle of you got to have conversations if you want to close deals. I was just talking to the number one agent in the world, <laughs> the number one agent in the world. Um, and we, we were talking about everything and uh, he, he's hilarious. And, and he was like, these agents got to get off this. Like, realtors aren't funny. <laughs> they got to get off social media um, and get back to being professional and um, stop trying to catch the trends and start realizing, like, they just need to go talk to people. Um, I think it's coming back, like, full circle. Like, it's crazy. Like, and when you combine this with social, you're dangerous, right? Um, so I'm not saying that this is, this is just, I, I, this is what I'll say. This is the fastest way to grow your business because you can only have so many conversations in a day. All right. So if you need a list of owners to call, go to redx.com backslash Ricky. If you want to see me execute what I'm teaching you in this video, you can go here. This is all in the document you're going to get when you download the script. Go here. I literally demo Red X, look up the owners and call them live right then and pick up leads. All right, let's dive into the uh, let's dive into the the script here. Okay, so first off, when when I when I am calling a cold seller lead, what one thing you got to realize is that they're getting called from other agents, and most of those agents are just saying, "Hey, would you consider selling?" That's the first thing. The next thing is is I'm not trying to get them to buy or sell anything. So when 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 I don't care, when, when, I, when I have made a decision that I don't care if they buy or sell anything for me, I, now I can show up only caring about them. I can show up only caring about them. Why? Because I don't care if they buy. I don't care if they sell. Now I take that totally out of the equation and guess that what that releases me of? Commission breath. Like I, I don't have commission breath. When I talk to sellers, they know that I don't care about if they list with me or not. That's why they list with me. Like, it's really that simple. Why? Because I can communicate with them in a way that shows them that I care about them more than the listing. When you get this, you will stack listings. So um, on my coaching call next week, I'm going to go through this, the script psychology. So um, so I don't have time to get into all the nuances and transitions and everything right here. But I'll run through this script with you. Um, and then I'll show you, I'll, then you, you'll realize that this could work for you. And this makes everything so easy because you're not approaching them saying, would you sell, you know, uh, I've got a buyer, uh, et cetera, the, the standard stuff. So the customer answers, hello, agent. Um, hey, Mr. Johnson? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Johnson, Ricky Cruz from whatever uh, brokerage in whatever area. How are you doing today? I'm great. Oh, me too. I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? Cool. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but I see you're in a three-bedroom on Riverside Road. Let me ask you, do you need a four-bedroom? Because I got a really nice one right down the road I'd love to show you. Boom! See, now we're bringing them value over trying to, now we're trying to give them something versus trying to take something from them, trying to take a listing from them, right? Trying to take their house from them. We're trying to give them a better quality of life. We're trying to give them a nicer house with a better view, a newer house, a bigger house, whatever. We're offering them that. Now, are they going to buy that house? Chances are not. But do they but but do they see us as a value provider? Yep. And now we're starting the, the the relationship out on the right foot. Might they buy that house? There's a possibility. If they don't, somebody else they know will. So you've got so much opportunity right here within the relationship, the future deals, and a possible deal today. Let's say they say, no, nah, we're good. Gotcha. Is there an agent in the area you would work with if you were to buy or sell something? Nope. 
great. Well, I'm sure you'll buy or sell something next at, at some point in the next, you know, five, 10 years. I don't know. I'd love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be all right if I just stayed in touch with you? Sure. Great. What's a good email for you? Thanks, man. What is this your cell phone? Cool. Well, look, I'm going to stay in touch with you via email if you ever need anything or have any questions. Again, my name is Ricky Carruth with whatever brokerage or whatever area. Even if it's to say, help move a piece of furniture, man, you give me a shout. Tell everybody I said hello, and we'll talk to you soon. Like, this is just a guideline, right? This, this, this is meant to help you understand where we're going with the conversation, what the reason of the call is, and how you can maximize the value that you're providing cold seller leads. This will help you stand out. This will help you prove to them. See, Frank Kern said, the way that you prove to people that you can help them is by actually helping them. When you call with this, what you're doing is you're demonstrating that you can and will and are willing to actually help them. You're not trying to just do a deal. Hey, Mr. Seller, you don't know me. I don't know you, but will you sell your house so I can make some money today? That's what everybody sounds like. Everybody's like going straight for uh, 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 the sale. Obviously, to make money, obviously, with a lot of commission breath. And obviously, you get a lot of no's from people who might have actually done a deal with you in six to eight months if you had the right approach and you weren't. See, guys, sales is a process, not an event. It's a process. It's not a boom. It's not an event that's going to happen today. It could happen today. Right? It could happen today, but it's it's not, it's not. It's not an event. It's a process. We have, to, we have to get to know our prospects. We have to take them down the road. We have to understand what their problems are. See, when we understand what their problems are more than they do, that's when they start to really value us. And that's kind of the next level. I want to take a couple of questions from uh, some, of the, some of my agents in the coaching program. If you have a question, if you're on the Zoom, just put your hand up. Go ahead, Michaela. I just put this in the chat, but so after they say they're not interested, I know the script just goes right into like getting their email, staying in touch. Is yep. there anything else we can do to try and convert it without sounding like we're just here to make a sale? Yeah. Well, the first thing is, is like, what are we trying to convert? I guess just find out if they would sell down the line, like just, I guess we're just trying to build that well, relationship. That's what you say, you say when they say they don't have an agent. You're like, okay, I got you. Well, I'm sure you'll sell at some point, right? And they're like, yep. Well, boom. Okay. Great. So I'd love to work ask, with you. Like, huh? Just don't ask anything else regarding. It, it. Listen, there's not a cookie cutter answer. It's different for every prospect. Mm -hmm. Like you'll get to where you feel this, you know, like you'll get a feeling that like something's there and it'll make you at, that's why it's so imperative to block out the inner noise and, and like focus so much on what they're saying, even down to like, how they're breathing, mm -hmm. um, you know, like how fat, like the whole thing, because, because like all those little nuances matter and it gives you data that you need to figure out how to communicate and what words and what direction to go to the conversation. See, this is what we're not good at. Um, this is what takes a lot of practice is knowing is, is having the intuition that there's more there and how to reposition yourself and and go the direction of figuring out what you're missing, you know. Um, there's not like a cookie cutter answer. Like one thing I like to do at the end, especially especially if it's a bad call, is be like, um, "Well, let me ask you this before you go. If I had a really smoking hot deal on a rental property, would you be interested?" I like that one. Um, but yeah, like if they're not interested, I'm not gonna like push there. And, yeah. that, and that's the problem a lot of agents make, right? The, the seller's like, I'm not interested in selling. And they're like, okay, well, when would you be? It's like, I just told you that I'm not interested in selling. How many times are you going to ask me today? You know what I mean? So yeah. again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process, not an event. Like if you got that far and they're still conversating with you and you get them that far and they're giving you their email, like that's fantastic. That, that's a fantastic position to be in where they feel comfortable enough with you. You know what I mean? to mm -hmm. give you that info. Um, okay. So that, yeah, it's just a feel thing, honestly. Um, you know, start to like freestyle. 
Yeah. You know, like veer off the script here and there, but, but see the script like gives you like the transitions and like where you're going and what you really want to do. Don't be scared to veer off, you know, and kind of go out, you know, take a little risk and go into no man's land. No, know, knowing that, you know, where you're going to come back to, right? Like, like take this little detour for a while, knowing that when it gets a little hazy, you're going to be like, all right, well, listen, man, if, if you had, if you were to sell, would you have an agent or, you know, um, like if they say no, you're like, oh, well, do you guys ever plan on selling? Like, you're going to keep it till it crumbles or what are you going to do? And and you go down that road because you took a little risk. You know that once it gets weird, you're going to be like, well, let me ask you this then. If you, when you do decide to do something, you have an agent you're going to work with, you know, like, you know, you're going to come right back where you need to be, you know, take a little risk here and there and see where you can take it. Okay. Thanks. Cool, cool, cool. Um, um, guys in the in the listening mastery coaching, uh, this script is in your email. I'll put it in the members area here shortly, um, and then I'll see you guys uh, on our call Monday. Everybody in YouTube, um, you know, go to the script uh, download link. Download the script. Go to radx.com backslash Ricky. Save the hundred fifty dollars. Get Geo Leads Plus and start calling property owners. Make five new friends a day. For five years, you'll have 6,000 friends, do a weekly email. You'll, you'll be the number one agent in your market. Just, just focus on it. <laughs> just focus on it, and you'll get there. Let me know if you have any questions or need anything, and uh, I appreciate you guys. Hope this helps. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.